Okay, uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Fahad Batayne. Uh, I work for the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. Uh, my day-to-day -day job is uh, engagement uh, in the Middle East, so I cover 26 countries uh, spanning from Pakistan all the way in the east to Morocco in the west, and of course, uh, every, uh, everything in between. Um, very happy to be with you all um, um, uh, at this event, um, Red and Net 2020 Online. Uh, I've, I've actually attended the previous editions of the event, um, and I've always found it to be uh, interesting uh, and even more interesting to actually engage uh, with civil society folks uh, from within the Middle East. Uh, so today I'll be talking about uh, the domain name system in, in times of COVID-19. Um, and just to give you a really quick introduction, um, since uh, COVID-19 uh, and the lockdown started uh, in March, um, uh, I mean, working from home, schooling from home, uh, e-commerce has been on the rise. Um, and this all has actually utilized uh, the internet. And of course, the internet has, uh, has been able to show resiliency. Uh, some quick international statistics show that actually uh, the uptake or the increase in utilization of the internet has increased uh, by 30%. And of course, we all have witnessed no uh, glitches uh, or no slowdown to the internet. So the internet has actually been able to accommodate uh, to this 30% uh, increase uh, in demand. Of course, one component of the internet is called the domain name system. Uh, we all use it. And of course, even the domain name system has been proven uh, to be resilient uh, during these times. So my agenda will be covering uh, three quick topics. Uh, I'll be talking about the domain name system, uh, and then I'll move on to talk a little bit about DNS traffic during COVID-19, uh, specifically the lockdowns. Um, and I'll conclude my uh, presentation by talking about uh, DNS abuse uh, during COVID-19. And of course, we'll, we'll all together learn more about uh, what DNS abuse is. Uh, I'd like this to be a really interactive session. Um, if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to uh, chime in anytime. Uh, I'm actually, I have the slides in front of me actually, and uh, I'm not monitoring uh, the, uh, the chat pod or even uh, the, the room, uh, the, the, the hop-in uh, room. So if, uh, if I mean, if you, you can just, uh, chime in. Um, I mean, you don't have to raise your hand. You can just uh, 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 jump in and, and, and ask your question or make any comments you may have. And of course, I'll be asking uh, for some help from our friends, from our hop-in room ninjas um, to, act, uh, to help me with, uh, with any Q&A and any feedback and, and any uh, interaction. So moving on, um, I'll talk a little bit first about the domain name system. And it's very important to understand, have a, a certain perspective on, on, on what we are talking about today. So when we talk about the internet, you know, the internet really understands IP addresses. So when we look at uh, the numbers uh, at the bottom of this slide, uh, 192.0.32.7, this is an IP address. And actually, this is what the uh, underlying infrastructure of the internet understands. However, we as human beings, we do not remember numbers in as good as we remember names. So we are better at actually remembering names. Um, one other example in our lives is that when you look at your uh, phone, you actually store uh, phone numbers of different people uh, according to their names. Uh, and when you want to search uh, for a certain phone number, you actually do the search by name, and then you just uh, click on it or tap on it, and, 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 and the call initiates. Of course, even the mobile network or the phone system doesn't understand names. It actually understands numbers. Uh, but for us as human beings, it's, it's, it's very easy to understand or to remember names, uh, but it's quite challenging to actually uh, remember numbers. Um, a domain name uh, actually has different uh, components, and, and it's worth actually understanding what each component uh, means. So when we look at the uh, terms like org, uh, or ICANN, or www, uh, these are called labels. Uh, when we take the name www.ican.org, this is called a domain name. And when we take the entire string, which is HTTP uh, colon uh, forward slash forward slash www.ican.org, uh, this is called a URL. Uh, so when you're in using terminology uh, with uh, with people around you, um, uh, I mean, try to use the, the, the correct terminology because there are many people outside there who actually uh, mix between these different uh, terms. Uh, the namespace is quite simple. So the domain name system uh, is, is hierarchical. We start right at the top and the top is called the root server system. It's uh, denoted uh, with a dot. Now, within the root server system, you will find uh, top-level domains, 
like .com, .org, uh, .lb. Uh, and of course, under each top-level domain, we register uh, domain names like ICANN.org or maybe smex.org. And once we actually register a domain name, uh, we can develop uh, more subdomains under it. For example, we have www.icann.org uh, to represent the website of ICANN, uh, or maybe mail.smex.org uh, to denote uh, the mail system of, of SMEX. Now, there are different kinds of top-level domains. Uh, and, and actually, to be more specific, we have three. So we have what we call country code top-level domains, and these represent countries. Uh, like .lb for Lebanon, .tn for Tunisia, uh, .jo for Jordan, where I come from, uh, and so on. Uh, we also have generic top-level domains, um, and, and this can be further split into two different kinds. So we have the legacy names like .com, .net, .org. Uh, these existed uh, from the early days of the internet, and to be more precise, starting in 1985. Uh, and then, of course, we have some a bunch of new names uh, such as .xyz, uh, .apps, uh, .london, .tokyo, .bmw, uh, and so on. And, and finally, we have internationalized uh, domain names, uh, and these are uh, top-level domains in local languages. Uh, so, for example, here in Jordan, we have .alurdun in Arabic. Um, of course, um, uh, there are many other IDNs. Uh, so we have .rf for the Russian Federation in Cyrillic. Uh, we also have... Uh, uh, dot china in chinese uh, we have dot india in in hindi and many other languages uh, and, and and here really the benefit is to actually register uh, domain names in in local languages and actually trying and being able to access different websites and different content uh, through these localized uh, domain names uh, this is a map of country codes and country codes usually represent either countries uh, or economies uh, and I think there is more than two. Uh, I think there is 253 uh, country code top level domains. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, it includes both countries uh, and economies. And when we say economies, uh, these are small islands actually that are away from mainland, uh, but are actually attached to a certain country. So, for example, uh, when we look at some of the countries in the Caribbean, uh, um, some of them are actually uh, affiliated with, with the United Kingdom but each one of them actually has their own country code top-level domain. Uh, even if you go to the Pacific, like Christmas Islands, or, um, or many of the Papua New Guinea and many of those other small islands, again, they're connected to a certain country, maybe the UK, maybe Australia, maybe New Zealand, and each one of them actually uh, has a country code top-level domain. Of course, the world has 196 countries or 197 according to UN definitions, but we have 253 different country code top level domains uh, because other than countries, we also have uh, independent economies. Uh, when we look at the generic top level domain space, as I mentioned, there's a, there was a huge uh, addition uh, to the top level domain space uh, and a program called the new GTLD program of 2012. Uh, and of course, as a result, uh, many new names have been introduced, uh, .apps, uh, .tech, uh, .bmw, .hotel, .amazon, and, and the list really goes on. And actually, if we sum up uh, GTLDs uh, with CCTLDs, we have more than 1,500 names um, under this, uh, this space. Uh, now, when we talk about internationalized domain names, and those are domain names uh, in local languages. Uh, so for those who are on this, uh, attending this session and can read Arabic, um, the, the URL that you can see in Arabic, which is al wakal al al-Muasalat.al-Maghrib, this is actually a domain name. It's valid, but of course, uh, computers uh, don't understand this. So computers only understand ASCII, and, and that is uh, A to Z, uh, 0 to 9, uh, and the dash, and of course, uh, some of the other uh, special characters. Uh, but uh, and, and when we talk about uh, the domain name system, uh, again, it only understands uh, ASCII uh, because that was how computer systems were developed uh, back in the days. And of course, uh, there should be a mechan. Uh, there, there does exist a mechanism that converts um, uh, uh, content in local languages uh, into ASCII. Um, and so, what we see in Arabic here is actually called Unicode, and we can actually translate Unicode into ASCII. Um, and uh, the, the, uh, the ASCII representation of the Arabic text is, as you can see below, 
xn dash dash and all this gibberish text which uh, makes no sense to any of us uh, but of course it does make a lot of sense uh, for computer systems uh, root servers it's very important to understand what root servers are so root servers is actually where the entire dns um, system starts um, uh, this is where we have all the top level domains um, and of course um, uh, as i'll be uh, demonstrating a, a little bit later in my presentation um, the root server system has been able to uh, demonstrate its resiliency during these lockdowns um, and um, of course uh, root servers are very important for the operations of the internet and the domain name system as a whole it's considered to be one of the critical internet resources uh, there are uh, 12 different operators uh, operating 13 different types uh, of root servers uh, but of course, we don't have only 13 uh, root servers. Uh, we actually have more than 1,350 instances of root servers. So these are copies. So for example, if we look at the L right down at number 12, this is the root server instance that is operated by ICANN. And we have, I think, 165 different instances or copies uh, scattered uh, around the world. Of course, the objective of these copies is to introduce more security, uh, more stability and more resiliency so if let's say a number of instances is in a certain geography are affected uh, due to uh, a natural um, uh, um, uh, problem or an, uh, a natural um, a catastrophe at least th there are many other instances across the world that can still um, accommodate the dns queries uh, that the, the root server system uh, receives um, so this is a map and, and there is a website called root-servers.org. Uh, you can visit this website uh, to actually see the different root servers, uh, root server instances uh, across the world. Of course, in the same map, you can see if you are curious to know if your country or your geography has any root servers, you can just go to this website and you can zoom into the map um, and um, it actually shows if there are any uh, instances or not. Of course, I did uh, develop these slides uh, late last week. So late last week, we had 1,341 root server instances uh, scattered all across the world. I'm assuming today the number would be slightly different, maybe a couple of copies extra. Uh, but I think the key message here is that this is this has been increasing. Uh, I think um, earlier this year we had uh, a little a little over a thousand. Uh, so it's quite. Um, I mean, I'm I'm even impressed that uh, during the pandemic there has been an addition of almost more than 300 uh, new instances, um, and which, which is of course very good uh, in, in, in many ways. Uh, it's very important uh, to differentiate between domain names uh, and the domain name system. So domain names are names that we use, google.com, uh, smex.org, uh, ican.org, yahoo.com, um, att.com, and so on. So these are domain names. Uh, we have the domain name system, and this is the system of uh, re resolvers, um, uh, servers, uh, and, and applications, and so on. So this is a system, and this is actually what does the uh, resolution pr process. So when you talk about domain name resolution, uh, we are talking about conversion of domain names uh, into IP addresses uh, and vice versa. So again, it's very important that we use uh, proper terminology. Uh, differentiate between what a domain name is and what the domain name system uh, is. I'll stop here maybe for a couple of seconds, see if anybody has maybe any questions, any feedback, would like to interact in any way with me. Okay, so hearing none, uh, I'll just move on. So during the pandemic, uh, uh, within ICANN, we have a team called, uh, uh, it's a research group actually, called uh, the Office of the Chief Technology Officer. And uh, they're, 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 well, I mean, part of their day-to-day -day job is to do research around uh, different, uh, I mean, uh, around the domain name system, uh, to put it this way. And, uh, and one of the things they decided to do was to actually um, uh, do some research around uh, traffic uh, um, uh, that, that that is um, getting into ICANN's managed root server, which which we saw on the map as the L root, uh, to understand how things have changed uh, during the pandemic. So, as some perspective, uh, ICANN manages one of the thirteen different root servers. 
It's called the ICANN Managed Root Server. It comes with the name l.rootservers.net. Um, of course, as of this writing, uh, we had uh, 167 different copies uh, scattered in 83 countries uh, across the globe. And um, uh, when the lockdown started in April 2020, my colleagues decided to do some research uh, and see uh, the effect of the lockdowns on the, on the different ICANN managed uh, root servers. Of course, the research, I think, started in March, uh, probably early April, and the results were demonstrated sometime in May. Uh, so if you look at this map, and I, I'm really uh, sorry uh, at this image, and I'm really sorry, actually, it's, uh, it's probably a little small in size, but if you look at the box, uh, which has a border of red, you will see that there has been a spike. So you would see that the, the spikes in there or the tooth, the teeth in there is, is a little bit higher, actually, compared uh, to to whatever is outside of the uh, uh, red uh, squared box. Uh, and actually, this uh, is the traffic that, uh, uh, I mean, I can manage root servers uh, usually get. Uh, so this, this graph actually tells us that there has been an increase of 20 to 25% in, in traffic uh, um, coming into the I can managed root servers. Uh, starting uh, from mid-March uh, 2020. So just imagine, we, we spoke at the start that um, uh, there was a hike of 30% in internet bandwidth utilization uh, since the start of the lockdowns. Uh, and when we look at the domain name system, at least specifically the ICANN managed root servers, it's somewhere between 20 uh, to 25%. So these are not, I mean, these numbers are not far apart. Again, because the, the domain name system is part of the internet. Uh, so, I mean, the numbers should always be uh, quite similar, not, not, not necessarily identical, uh, but similar. And of course, there are many reasons why it's not exactly 30% as, as the internet utilization was. Uh, but of course, I mean, because these root servers, at least the ICANN managed root server is not found in every geography of the world. So we did say it, it does exist in 83 different countries. And so there are many other countries that still don't have this I can manage root servers. But of course, they might be having instances of other flavors of, of root servers. Uh, so traffic analysis, what did we do? What we did is that we, we, of course, you can't do analysis for all the 167 instances. So what we did is that we took four instances in France, uh, two in Paris, uh, one in Lyon, and one in Marseille. Uh, and, and the analysis was, was done on these four uh, root server instances. And, and just to share with you maybe some information about the lockdowns in France, on March 12th, the government announced schools and universities closed by March 16. Uh, on March the 13th, gatherings with more than 100 people were prohibited. On March 14, non-essential public places are closed. And of course, on March 16, national lockdown begins 17 March. So yeah, I mean, the, 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 the strict lockdown started um, in, uh, on the 17th uh, of March. Uh, now, a significant portion of the DNS queries that go into the IMRS uh, based in France actually originate from within the country. Um, so yeah, these servers mostly serve uh, DNS traffic from within um, uh, France. Now. Our friends at RIPE NCC, um, RIPE NCC is an entity that actually distributes IP addresses to Europe uh, and the Middle East. So they have this, uh, these probes called RIPE Atlas. So they are small devices that you plug into your uh, network. Uh, and what they do is that they collect uh, uh, traffic uh, or traffic uh, statistics. And of course, the objective here is really not to um, do any kind of spying on your traffic. Uh, it's really uh, just to you know, for, for research purposes. So it gathers set, uh, specific data where researchers would take and, and, and try to analyze and come up with different uh, analysis. So uh, France has a lot of ripe atlases. So you can see in this map all these blue dots. These are where um, ripe atlases exist in France. And as you can see, France has a dense um, a number of uh, uh, atlas probes um, connected within networks. Uh, within the country. And of course, this, this also helped a lot in, in, in obtaining um, accurate results, the results, let's say, that uh, my colleagues uh, obtained within, within the office of the chief technology officer. Uh, so if we look at this graph, and if you look at the vertical line uh, to the uh, right, 
uh, of course, uh, uh, starting on 17 March, that was when the lockdowns uh, occurred. Uh, um, uh, there was an increase uh, in traffic, uh, or in, uh, uh, of course, to the IMRS, and that's a, as a result of uh, increase in utilization and usage you know, of the internet uh, as a whole. Now, I'm not going to get into details as to what the orange represents and what the blue represents, but you might be surprised if I tell you that almost 70% of the traffic that hits uh, root, server uh, root servers in general are for non-existent uh, TLDs. Uh, so yeah, it's 70%, 70, and that's, a, that's, a, that's more than two-thirds of the uh, traffic that gets into uh, root server instances, while almost 30% of the traffic uh, is actually from valid TLDs, from TLDs that do exist like .com and .net and .org and .lb and so on. Um, so, and, and, that, and that is represented in blue. So as you can see during the lockdowns, uh, whether uh, traffic from non-existent TLDs or traffic from existent TLDs, uh, there was a spike in, um, in, in, in traffic going into these uh, ICANN managed root server instances uh, in France. Uh, the methodology and the findings, uh, six uh, weeks starting 3 February and week 12 is the week starting 17 March. Uh, and and of, of course, uh, the, 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 this is, uh, I mean, if, if we look at the graph here, it shows uh, week numbers. Uh, so week six uh, and week uh, 12. And, and of course, um, uh, this, this is a count from the start of the year. So week six was actually the week of three to seven February. Uh, week 12 uh, was the week of 17 to 22 uh, March. And in, the, on these, in these four instances in specific in France, uh, the findings were that there was an increase of 28% uh, in overall uh, traffic. And if we look at numbers, uh, between weeks one, uh, sorry, between weeks six and 11, we had an average of 5.4 billion uh, queries per week, uh, whereas uh, uh, on week 12, there was 6.9 billion queries. So there was an increase of one and a half billion queries per week, uh, starting from week uh, 12. So this, you, you can just imagine uh, the increase um, in, uh, in, in, in the usage or utilization of root server instances. Uh, but of course, nobody felt uh, any negative effects, no slowdowns or of any sort, um, uh, I mean, in terms of the domain name system, and here when I talk, I'm talking about the domain name system only, uh, with this increase of 28%, uh, the domain name system was functioning um, as it has always been. Uh, the, I mean, nobody felt any uh, side effects uh, as a result of this uh, increase in, in utilization. Um, if you are a technical person, or even if you, I mean, well, okay, I mean, so my, my colleagues, what they did is that they, uh, uh, they documented their findings in a paper, um, and you can. And this is the URL uh, to the paper. Uh, you can actually download it and read it. Uh, it was written in in, uh, in very simple English. Um, you don't need to have a lot of uh, technical background uh, to understand it. Uh, in fact, uh, tuning into this presentation, uh, you would would you would uh, you would have an understanding of much of the terms that you will be finding uh, in this paper. It's quite interesting. It's a very short paper probably 10 to 15 minutes read, uh, but it gives you an, uh, an overview of, uh, of how COVID-19 actually uh, affected um, ICANN managed root servers. Now, you might be asking, what's the key takeaways uh, from speaking about this all? Um, so yeah, I mean, the key takeaway is that uh, the pandemic did increase internet usage, uh, but of course the internet remained resilient. Uh, why did the internet remain resilient? Because its different components uh, were also resilient. So the internet consists of many components. You have uh, the domain name system, you have IP addresses, you have protocols, you have infrastructure, and all of this was resilient. Where it was able to accommodate you know, the increase in, uh, in internet traffic, uh, and as a result, uh, the um, um, I mean the internet as a whole was still uh, resilient. So that's part two of my presentation. Um, any questions? All right. Uh, I mean, you can you can either type your questions or you can also, you can even um, um, ask your questions. Just speak in the in the mic if you have access. Okay. So hearing none. 
I'll move on. So one other thing that occurred during COVID-19 was abusive behavior of domain names. And when we talk about DNS abuse, um, you can, you're talking about different components of the, of the domain name ecosystem, whether be it uh, registering uh, abusive domain names uh, or even uh, maybe uh, um, doing bad things to the domain name system, maybe attacking it. But of course, here in my presentation, my focus will be on registering uh, abusive domain names. Now, this graph is really an interesting graph in a way that uh, it, it shows you the increase in, 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 in the number of uh, domain, name re domain names registered uh, during, uh, since the start of the lockdowns. Um, so when people uh, got locked down, uh, and this includes all of us, uh, some uh, were quite uh, quick to actually um, maybe utilize the internet to try and drive some sort of a business or try to drive some sort of an initiative. And, and, and this involved actually registering uh, domain names. And of course, uh, as in any, uh, I mean, as in any other industry, uh, you have good players and you have bad players. And of course, while good players were trying to do some really good stuff on the internet, you also had bad players who were trying to uh, seize the opportunity or seize this pandemic uh, which of course the pandemic is not an opportunity, but they seize that the opportunity to utilize the pandemic or the 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 the, the detail. I mean, what the pandemic brought to humanity, and, and and try to make maybe some extra money or try to become famous. I mean, you can name it. I mean, it's it's quite funny sometimes that in such hard times you still find people who are doing uh, nasty stuff uh, online. Uh, now, in terms of uh, extracting uh, suspicious domain names, of course, not everything was suspicious, but there was a surge uh, since the lockdowns in March uh, on domain name registrations that actually included uh, terms related to the pandemic, whether uh, Corona, COVID, uh, pandemic, um, lockdown, uh, of course, some medicines like uh, chloroquine, some previous similar uh, viruses like SARS and uh, H1N1, and of course, a translation of these different uh, terms in other uh, languages, maybe like uh, Corona in Arabic, uh, and of course, hemoglyphs. So rather than writing COVID with a C-O-V-I-D, uh, some registered names are like C0V1D uh, to again represent uh, COVID. Um, and of course, some also went as far as registering internationalized domain names and of course, names that are a little bit uh, confused, I mean, similarly confusing, uh, just to, che I mean, cheat people into thinking that this is, um, a, 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 let's say, a genuine uh, domain name. And uh, of course, between January and November uh, 2020, uh, we, we found uh, a little over 248,000 domain names that were identified uh, to have uh, these terms. Of course, uh, not all of them uh, were bad domain names. I mean, many of these registrations were registered for genuine uh, purposes, for good purposes. Uh, and of course, um, but still, I mean, like between May and November 2020, uh, out of the 147,000 domain names that were registered, um, around 9.194 were uh, had, had some sort of evidence uh, of a misuse. Uh, and of course, of the 9,194, there were 2,573 uh, that had high confidence uh, reports in it, uh, meaning that uh, they were really suspicious and they involved some, some level of, of, of crime. So as you can see, these are really large numbers. Of course, uh, when we look at, uh, w when we read statistics uh, from different sources, so for example, Center is an entity in, in Europe it's more of an association for country code top level domains in Europe. Uh, I think sometime in May, June, they uh, released a study on the increase of uh, uh, domain name registrations under 10 different uh, country code top level domains in, in Europe. And there was a good amount of increase in, in terms of domain name registration. And as I mentioned earlier, the more domain names we have, uh, I mean, there's, a, there's also a large number of, um, of names that would be suspicious that would be used for um, illegal or um, un unethical uh, purposes. 
Uh, so, but again, I mean, when we compare, let's say, nine thousand one hundred and ninety-four uh, domain names uh, with one hundred and forty-seven thousand, uh, that's probably six seven percent. Um, it's not a super large number, but again, we still have a large number of uh, bad domain names that are used for um, any sort of bad purposes. And of course, when we talk about that, when we say bad, um, it would range maybe from trying to sell. Um, let's say, um, um, vaccines or, I mean, some people claim that they have the vaccine and so some websites were trying to sell uh, what they called vaccines or COVID-19 vaccines uh, to others uh, selling probably masks and gloves that were poor quality. And, and so really the, the purpose of using these domain names um, varied in terms of um, what kind of bad actness, what kind of uh, bad acting um, were they registered uh, for. Uh, in terms of keywords identified, uh, so this graph kind of uh, uh, demonstrates uh, keywords that were registered, so uh, stuff like, I mean, uh, keywords in domain names. So a domain name was registered that would contain some of these keywords. Um, so COVID, mask, coronavirus, payment, pandemic, quarantine, uh, NCOV, vaccine, lockdown, and some other words. Of course, uh, the table to the bottom right uh, shows uh, the, the languages these domain names were registered in. And of course, not surprisingly, uh, more than 94% of the domain names were registered in English. Uh, then we had uh, registrations in other languages like German, French, Spanish, Dutch, Turkish, um, and, and so on. Uh, and of course, this graph uh, is, is kind of self, I mean, the table is just shows all the numbers um, and, and you can just have a look at it. Uh, now, in terms of detection of proven cases, um, there, was a, there, was a, there was a distinction between healthy domain names and uh, malicious domain names. Of course, if a domain name was identified as healthy, uh, no further work is to be done. But if a domain name was uh, uh, marked to be kind of suspicious. Further research was done to actually ensure that this is really suspicious or was it some sort of a human error or maybe a, 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 defle a deflect um, or whatever. So yeah, I mean, not everything uh, that looked suspicious uh, was marked as suspicious from the start. Further investigation was done to ensure that actually these domain names were really uh, uh, bad. Now, there were a couple of APIs used uh, to, to do th th this homework. So you, you have a number of um, entities outside there who actually do a lot of work on um, uh, abuse and spam. And, 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 and of course, uh, ICANN is not affiliated with them, but we again, we, we do work with them. We obtain data sets from them and, and work on these different uh, abuse cases. Um, additional checks uh, included uh, DNS records, network uh, locations, and, and of course, these are these were the ways in which uh, malicious domain names were actually further investigated to ensure that they were really uh, malicious. So checking them against blacklists, uh, uh, checking their DNS records. Now, DNS records actually show you numbers, uh, time to live. Um, I mean, content numers in, in seconds and in milliseconds. Uh, well, actually, in seconds to be precise. And, um, and and of course these numbers are usually I mean they have uh, there are some best practices on on what to set each field in terms of uh, a value and of course when these values uh, didn't look right again uh, they kind of added uh, an extra dimension of suspiciousness uh, network location again now where was it located is it located in a really good data center or is it um, a standalone machine. Um, and uh, is it behind a good IP address? Is it be behind a bad IP address or a blacklisted IP address? How often is the IP address changed? These were ways actually in which um, the, the detection process uh, happened. Uh, of course, it's a very long process. Um, I don't think, um, I mean, I, I did not include it here intentionally because for the sake of time, I don't think we will have enough time to actually uh, go through the entire uh, process. Now, the key takeaways really is that, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, the pandemic is, is about, has been a bad thing and continues to be a bad thing. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, the, the pandemic is also able to um, have human beings probably think in more innovative ways. And one of those in ways was to actually better utilize the internet. 
I think the internet was the friend uh, for almost everybody uh, during the pandemic. But again, there were some bad, bad actors who actually utilized it uh, for bad purposes. Um, so now one other thing actually worth mentioning is that even during the pandemic, different professionals came together to actually work on combating uh, 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 abusive behavior, whether it be it domain names uh, or IP addresses uh, or even applications. I mean, you name it. So uh, one, one group that came together actually to work on uh, abuse-related matters is called the Cyber Threat Coalition. Um, and, and, and ICANN does a, a good amount of... Uh, let's say, coordination and liaising with them uh, to ensure that the domain name space is, uh, is clean and remains as clean as, as possible. Uh, last but not least, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, ICANN. So ICANN is actually the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. Uh, we are involved in three things. Uh, one is domain names. The other is numbers or what we call IP addresses. And the third is protocol parameters. Uh, of course, numbers are usually fully operated by the regional internet registries. And when we talk about protocols, protocols are developed and maintained with the Internet Engineering uh, Task Force. Uh, as for names, this is our core business, uh, whether the technical parts uh, or even uh, the policy aspects, this is all worked on uh, within ICANN. Uh, our focus is really on, on, on the domain name part. Of course, um, all these three things collectively uh, fall under what we call the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, IANA. Uh, and, and all the, these three functions are actually the IANA functions, and IANA is actually operated uh, within ICANN. Uh, I just wanted to share this, uh, this slide uh, just to introduce you quickly uh, to ICANN. Uh, if you are anytime interested in ICANN or ICANN's work, uh, you're more than welcome to, to reach out to me. Um, and I'll be happy to, to get you um, into the ICANN ecosystem. Uh, that's it from me. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I can see that there is a question from Frida. So, so thank you, Frida, for your question. Uh, uh, so you say, were you able to detect domains that were used to spread misinformation around COVID-19, not just used for spam and selling fake products? So yes, Frida, probably I did not uh, describe it well, uh, just for the sake of time. <laughs> so we took everything that had to do with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, with COVID. Uh, um, no, I mean, we did have, uh, so we don't work on this uh, uh, in silos. Uh, we work with registries, and that's TLD registries. We work with registrars. Uh, we work with um, uh, with uh, uh, certs. We, wor we work with different cybersecurity uh, agencies. And, and the purpose really here is, is collective. I mean, cybercrime is never fought alone. Uh, if you want to fight cybercrime, uh, you have to work uh, on it uh, collectively. So, yes. Uh, the the whole th thing of uh, spreading misinformation is something we did work on, of course, in terms of domain names. So we are very limited. So if there was a website uh, that had, uh, let's say, uh, let's say a YouTube channel on YouTube, somebody uploaded a video uh, spreading misinformation. So we 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 don't have a role there. I mean, we can't take down YouTube, uh, but of course, YouTube has its own policies to remove such content from within their uh, platform. So in terms of content, we do not have any role in actually. Uh, taking out content that's not our job but when it involves domain names and even actually when it comes to domain names so we as i can uh, we do not remove domain names from the uh, from the root server we are not a regulator but of course we we do work with registries we do work with registrars and we cooperate together and of course it's a, it's an ethical uh, kind of um, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's an ethical, um, uh, what's the right term? So I'm, I'm losing terms here. I'm really sorry. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it fell on the shoulders of the registries and registrars to actually say, okay, this is a bad thing. We have to remove it. It's, it's, doing, it's spreading misinformation and this shouldn't be uh, happening. And, and, and actually, there were cases where, yeah, some domain names were literally disconnected because uh, they were spreading all kinds of nasty stuff uh, related to COVID. Any other questions? So seeing none, um, uh, we are five minutes. Uh, we still have five more minutes, actually four minutes at the moment. Um, so um, I'll give you back four minutes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for attending my presentation. Uh, you can actually write to me. So I'll be writing my email uh, in the 
chat pod um, uh, feel free to reach out to me if uh, you need anything i mean if you have any questions if you'd like me to point to anybody uh, i'd really appreciate it um, i'm quite responsive over email uh, so thank you thank you for listening uh, thank you to the organizer smex for having me um, and um, i wish you a very good day thank you so much bye